there and happy Tuesday. My name is Allison Coleman and I am a program manager with the National Recreation and Park Association. I'm excited to be the first to welcome you to today's live webcast focused on committing to health in your out of school time programs. We're filming today live from NRPA headquarters in Ashburn, Virginia. And we're so happy to be here and have so many park and recreation professionals tuning in across the country. We're looking forward to a great day of learning, offering some new strategies and best practices, and hearing from some folks in the field who are implementing the different aspects of this program. We'll also have plenty of time to answer any questions you might have. I'd like to extend a special thank you to the Walmart Foundation for generously providing the funding for the training opportunity today. They are vital partners in the work that so many park and recreation agencies are doing this year, and they've contributed significantly to the resources that NRPA has been able to develop for our health and wellness portfolio. We'd also like to thank a few other individuals who made today possible. Thank you to Dr. Danielle Holler, President of Healthy Networks Design and Research. She has played a pivotal role in the development of our nutrition literacy program, which you'll hear more about later today. She's also essential to our grant evaluation and several other aspects of implementation. In addition, we want to thank the Alliance for a Healthier Generation for their continued support of our Commit to Health initiative. Specifically, we'd like to thank Ava Young, Jill Turley, and Daniel Hatcher for their who constantly provide resources, tools, technical assistance, and ideas. In addition, I want to thank two other special guests who made the trip here today, Rianne Anthony and Adrian Clutter. They represent two park and recreation agencies who've been implementing these programs over the last few years. They've made the trip to headquarters to share their experiences with you. We have a very full and exciting day planned. We're scheduled to run until about 4.30 p.m. and you'll have the privilege of hearing from some amazing speakers and presenters throughout the day. I know that you'll all benefit from their knowledge and their experiences as well as the best practices that they'll share with you and I hope that you each go home feeling inspired and with a wealth of information to share with your program staff, site directors, and communities about how your park and recreation sites can commit to health to create a healthier out-of-school time program this year. So I want to take a few moments to go over today's agenda so you know exactly what to expect. We'll be starting off today from hearing, by hearing from some of our past Commit to Health agencies. Rianne and Adrian will share their experiences with you over the last few years and how their agency has made positive health and wellness changes. Following our past agencies, Ava and Jill will dive into the healthy eating and physical activity standards, which are part of our Commit to Health initiative. We will have a break from 2.45 to 3.15 p.m., where we'll pick up again this afternoon with a session that's dedicated to our nutrition literacy curriculum with Dr. Danielle Holler. And finally, we'll have an opportunity for you to ask any questions that you may have at the end of today's program. In addition, I'd like to go over some quick housekeeping items right off the bat and make sure that everyone's comfortable asking questions and using our fun polling feature that we have today. You'll notice on your screen that there's an image of the poll screen being displayed. This is an opportunity to participate in some fun polls that we have. This will also help to shape some of the sessions, so we really encourage you to participate in these polls. We'll be conducting these live throughout the day. Uh, and in addition, you'll also notice that in the same box, you have the ability to ask questions. It's helpful when you ask questions, and actually it's required today uh, that you enter in your name. And we'd also love it if you share the agency that you're from um, in case we have any additional questions as we go on. So let's go ahead and take our first poll and just do a little trial so we can make sure that everyone is clear on how to use it. So we'd love to know if you guys are happy that summer's over and that fall is right around the corner. So it looks like we're getting some mixed responses here, but I think the majority of us, about 50% are happy that fall is right around the corner. We'd agree with you in Virginia because it's been very hot and humid where we are and we're ready for some cooler weather. Great. 
It looks like everyone is clear on how to use the polling features, and keep in mind that's also how you'll ask questions. So, before we get started with our very first session, I want to provide a little bit of background information on the main topics that our training is going to cover today. There are some folks that are joining us who actually may be new to some of these topics, so I want to spend a little bit of time talking about them. So today we're going to focus on three main topics. The, the child nutrition programs that are federally funded by the government, NRPA's Commit to Health initiative, which is the implementation of the HEPA standards, as well as NRPA's new nutrition literacy curriculum, Foods of the Month. Let's start with the USDA child nutrition programs. Food and Nutrition Services under USDA administers several programs that provide healthy food to children in need throughout the school year as well as during out of school times. These programs include the National School Lunch Program, the Child and Adult Care Food Program, as well as the Summer Food Service Program amongst others. Administered by state agencies, each of these programs helps fight hunger and obesity by reimbursing organizations such as schools, child care centers, and after-school programs for providing healthy meals to children in need. You're probably aware of this, but park and recreation agencies are the leading providers of out-of-school time meals and snacks, serving millions of meals each year to low-income and underserved children. All community-based programs that offer enrichment activities for at-risk children and youth ages 18 and under are eligible to serve meals and snacks through CACFP if they meet the eligibility requirements. Programs must be offered in areas where at least 50% of the children are eligible for free and reduced price meals based upon school data. If you're interested in starting a CACFP program or an SFSP program, or would like to know more about eligibility requirements, we encourage you to visit www.fns.usda.gov. You can learn more there, or you can also email us, and we'll direct you to the best resources for getting a program started. Today, our past grantees are going to share some strategies that are specific to the Child and Adult Care Food Program and how they've helped to increase the number of meals that have been served, as well as the quality of those meals during their before and after school programs. So we look forward to that session right after this. The second topic that we're going to be discussing today is focused on NRPA's Commit to Health initiative. Ava and Jill from the Alliance for a Healthier Generation are going to talk more about this, but I want to give you guys a little bit of background. In 2014, NRPA launched our Commit to Health campaign. This is a campaign that supports the implementation and evaluation of the healthy eating, physical activity standards in park and recreation sites. To address the child obesity epidemic and the growing health concerns surrounding this generation of children, the HEPA standards were created by a national coalition of out-of-school time leaders to create evidence-based practical values that foster the best possible nutrition and physical activity outcomes for children in grades K through 12 attending out-of-school time programs. The standards include things like ensuring that a fruit and vegetable is served at every meal, and on the physical activity side, ensuring that children in half-day programs are getting 30 minutes of physical activity each day. In addition, the standards address things like providing nutrition education, parent and family engagement, and screen time and water provision. The HEPA standards have been adopted by many national organizations, including NRPA, as well as the YMCA of the USA and the Boys and Girls Club. Together, each of these organizations is working to move the needle on youth health and wellness. NRPA has pledged to engage 2,000 park and recreation sites in the implementation of the HEPA standards. To date, and we're very excited about this, over 1,200 park and recreation sites, including many of you who are watching today, have pledged their commitment on implementing these standards. And that is impacting over 200,000 youth across the country. 
for providing increased access to healthy foods and increased opportunities for physical activity, keeping this generation healthy and strong. Lastly, we're going to be discussing in detail NRPA's new nutrition literacy curriculum, the Commit to Health Foods of the Month curriculum. Nutrition literacy is a vital component of the HEPA standards, as well as all of our work to educate youth about making healthy choices, developing healthy habits, and understanding the importance of taking care of our bodies. In addition, this can help to combat the obesity epidemic, lower healthcare costs and chronic disease risk, and stimulate learning opportunities during out of school times for our children. The Foods of the Month Nutrition Literacy Curriculum is specifically designed for park and recreation agencies. All of the materials are free and downloadable from NRPA's website. Each month features two foods, as you can see on your screen, like tomatoes and summer squash, or food groups like whole greens and lean meats. Each month also provides a suite of evidence-based materials, including coloring and activity sheets, experiential hands-on activities that include things like taste testing and art, math, and science. We also have parent newsletters to engage families in trying new recipes and food preparation tips. There are also physical activities each month and resources for the home that are included. In addition, we provide a lesson plan guide which offers options on how to use the materials and the different lessons that you can conduct. Each of these guides is specific for grades K through two and grades three through five, so the activities are age appropriate. Later today, Dr. Danielle Holler will be talking about this curriculum in detail and how best to implement it in the after school setting. So as you can see, we have a very busy day ahead of us. We are about to jump into our first session featuring some of our local park and recreation agencies but I want to do one last group activity before we get started. This year, we launched a brand new Commit to Health text messaging campaign. Every Friday, you can receive health and wellness texts sent straight to your cell phone. We know that many of you are already enrolled in this great program and have found it really useful, but we want to encourage all of you to join. In fact, let's all take a moment to sign up. It's super easy and the information is so valuable. All you need to do is grab your cell phone and text health tips one to four one four one one to join today. I'm going to give everyone a moment to do that. And while you're at it, please encourage more of your friends and family members to join this amazing program. We heard from people all over this summer who are using it and finding it very valuable. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick transition and then we will jump right into our first session.